All right, hey there, YouTube out here. I decided to start filming. Uh, took the uh, drain plug out of the transfer case, let the oil drain out. It's uh, looking pretty dark, so I mean, you really can't tell, but it's nasty, so it needed to be changed. Like right now, but uh. Gonna get ready to start doing the SYE kit. It's a little chilly out here, so I'm gonna do as much as I can before I get too cold. And then uh, probably uh, film this over a few days. But uh, I got to looking at uh, this thing, and I noticed it has like two plugs. Well, one of them's like this speedometer sensor, which is a top one and it has this other one so I'm guessing that one the lower one is like an indicator for your lights on your dash uh, you know tell if it's uh, you know four high or four low um, but I looked at the SYE kit and it doesn't have like an input for that and then I went and looked on the uh, white Jeep out back and it doesn't have one of those so uh, I guess I don't need it we'll just have to go by what the stick says but uh, yeah I'm gonna try to do all this while the uh, while this thing's installed hopefully uh, it's not too bad inside I'm not gonna go step by step because there's bunch of videos that'll show you how to do this but I will just kind of pop you in and show you where I'm at maybe point out some things uh, but next uh, I'm gonna get my I'll put this back I'll, I'll tighten that back up and then uh, I'm going to unplug these things, get them out of there, and then I'm going to uh, uh, start taking off the uh, front drive shaft, probably lower this uh, cross member here, and then see what happens from there. So I'll bring you back when I get to the next point. Alright, we're back. Uh, taking the uh, cover of this uh, back cover of the uh, transfer case off. Uh, you see I did some work. Uh, just wanted to kind of do a recap on what we did. Took the front drive shaft off. The uh, hopefully you can see. I can't see the yoke off. Uh, and then this back uh, covers off. And between uh, this piece and that piece, once you get that piece off down below, it'll still be on here. And then, uh, like right in here, I think, somewhere anyway, there'll be a lock ring and lock ring. Where is it? It's right here. This is one of these guys. They don't have the holes or anything in them, so you need a different kind of plier. I don't think I need that one again, but these are the ones I got. They got like a flat, flat tip right here with a little cut out and all that uh, I'll leave a I'll try to remember to leave a link to where I got mine it was off Amazon uh, it came in real handy it took me a while to find them because I was expecting them to have red handles so when I was looking through my toolbox I missed these black handled ones so uh, then they were laying under something so I got and then I got to put them in the right drawer uh, so you get that snap ring off and you get to this point. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to look. I need to look up the uh, measurement 
for this. This is only supposed to stick out like either three quarters of an inch uh, to an inch in four low and it's in four low right now. Uh, so I'm going to take my measurements, wipe that off, mark it, and then get out the grinder and grind it off and uh, we'll finish up taking all this stuff off. Um, from some of the videos that I watched on how to do this, uh, I think their bolts and stuff were all different sizes than mine. Uh, like, let's see, the bolts that, let's see, held this piece on right here and they were a 10 millimeter I think somebody else had like a like a 12 or something 12 millimeter and then uh, the bolts that held this piece on were 15 millimeter uh, so I had to use 15 millimeter this thing came in handy a little Ryobi impact tearing them things off uh, and then these ones I think are uh, they're 15 as well and I think the other guy had they were like 5 8 or they were just some weird sizes so none of these are the same I guess so you just gotta find the right sizes for what you're doing but let me uh, measure that cut it and then uh, we will uh, move on. So let me uh, do this stuff and I'll bring you back. Now we're back. Uh, I had to go out and buy this uh, 20 ton uh, shop press to pop the needle bearings out of this uh, gear housing. Um, Down in, inside of, uh, down inside of there, I don't know if you can see them, but on this outer edge around here, uh, there's needle bearings, uh, and I need to pop those out so that the new shaft over here can fit down inside because this, this area is, is, it's thicker than that other one, the old one. And then I was looking at this housing, that's why you housing, and I think that that little plug, I put it in there, uh, it didn't come put in there, but I think that's where you plug in that little uh, indicator for the uh, light, for the uh, uh, light on the dash for models like this. Otherwise, if it doesn't have that, you just put that plug in there. But uh, you saw all the the parts over there uh, in that bucket but here oh geez uh, I got it all split apart got that shaft right there cut down I'm hoping I didn't cut too much off because when I was cutting it I kind of went at an angle and had, then had to grind it down I had to pull the whole thing out and take it over to the bench grinder and grind it flat and then uh, I kind of marred up on the edge just a little bit. I allowed the uh, grinder to go out and it, it hopped across the surface. So I'm hoping that doesn't cause any problems. Hopefully it'll just allow a little bit of area for some oil to seep in and keep it all oiled. But I'm hoping I didn't shorten it up too much. Uh, so yeah, so it's all apart. And uh, I'll bring you back when uh, we get to the next point. All right, I'm back with uh, I forgot to film some stuff. Uh, you'll notice, you know, it's all pretty much put together. Uh, forgot to film putting in the. They're showing you that I put in the shafts and stuff like that. And then uh, what I had to do to 
get the tube up in there for the oil pump. So yeah, it took some doing doing that. I had to had to really fight with it. But oh well, it's all on there. Uh, it's a data plate. Uh, I'll show you. Let's see. I bought first this it's orange thread locker. I guess it's supposed to be as strong as the red, but uh, removable with hand tools uh, like the blue. So I'm going to try that. And I put that on all these bolts. I put that on these bolts when I get around to it. But I wanted to show you. <coughs> A lot of people use different different sealants and stuff, but this is the stuff I got. Permatex gear oil gasket maker and it's pretty thick and it's gray and uh it just sticks to everything like every you know, all that stuff does. Like all my hand got it all over. But uh yeah. Wish these pliers had opened up would open up a little more because they made it really hard to get that snap ring on there for the those gears now let's see what do I need next alright I'm going to get into this box and figure out what I need to do next and then I'll bring you back and show you Alright, we're back again, and it's all installed. Uh, just got to let this cure up a little bit. It started to rain the other day, so I had to go inside. But uh, this is all should be cured, so I'll be able to fill it up soon. It says to give it like 24 hours. Uh, so this... We'll need 24 hours, all this sealant that I put up in there. But, uh, yeah, there it is. Next, I'll be uh, working on taking the uh, rear axle out and uh, rolling the other one around to get it put in. So, but that's that's pretty much it for that doing the transfer case and next I'll have to remove all these bolts and raise the um, cross member which that shouldn't take too long I don't think there's I think I should just be able to zip them out but I'll get on that at another time I'll definitely want that uh, want that done um, before I get to measuring and setting my pinion angle and stuff, I want it back up in there where it needs to be. So, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, let's see if there's anything. So, like a lot of the guys say to clock this Speedo uh, sensor certain way you know like remember where you set it but if you look at that it kind of moves around on its own you know so i don't know how much of a big deal that that really is and plus down here on this bottom base plate on mine uh it has like these little grooves that this locking fork thing goes down into and locks it in place so i don't know Yep, I just don't know. So I'll get that thing filled up with ATF and we'll uh, move on to the next part. But that's it for this video. So until next time, you all take care now.